Hey, it's Travel Jiggler and we are at Witzat Nature Reserve in the Northern Cape. Witzat is about 120 kilometers as the crow flies from Uppington. For more information on the Witzat Nature Reserve, check out my episode on that. This is going to be about the campsite only. So we're camping out here in the Kalahari. It is hot, skies are blue, there's some patchy cloud, and it is beautiful so far. The sites are all pretty well appointed. They have all the basics that you would generally need for camping. The campsites are pretty much in a circle around the bathrooms and washing station. They're relatively close to each other, so there isn't a lot of separation between the campsites, although they are very clearly demarcated, and there is generally some sort of barrier from one campsite to the next in the form of some sort of vegetation. The amount of shade available is generally pretty good, however it does vary from site to site. The site is also relatively flat, so it's quite easy to put up your tent. You are allowed a maximum of six people per site. The campsites have two different size, but I think most of them could accommodate, let's say, a caravan or a couple of tents. As can be expected in the Kalahari, there's no grass, so the sites are sandy, but it's not dusty. There's a built-up fireplace with a braai grill, which I quite like because this doubles up as a braai facility as well as a place to have your campfire. Electricity is provided via a caravan type socket. So ensure that you have an adapter for your normal three pin plug. Portable water is available at each of the sites. Each campsite has a dustbin which is baboon proof. There is a single campsite light as well. I recommend however that you make your own provisions for extra lighting. Ablutions consist of showers, basins and toilets. There is both hot water and cold water. We found the ablutions to be generally well kept and in good order. There's also a washing station to do your dishwashing and laundry, as well as drying lines to dry your wet clothes. There's a small store at the reception where you can get wood and ice and charcoal and a couple of small things like sweets and chips and cold drinks, that sort of thing. It's relatively easy to access. It's about 1.4 kilometers from the campsite itself. So if you want to go there and you want to walk, then it's about a 20 minute walk, which is not too bad. Although bear in mind that we are in the Kalahari, so it is really hot. So what do you need to bring with you? Well, not much actually. There is water on the site, there's electricity, there's a bright stand and so on. But you do need to bring your own charcoal and firewood, although you can buy charcoal at the store. Note that there is no food at the store, not food of significance, just snacks. So you've got to make sure that you bring all your food requirements. Note that there is no fuel on the site. So you've got to fill up before you get here. When you drive around the park itself, there are some pretty sandy places and there's a nice 4x4 trail as well. So make sure you've got sufficient fuel. There's a 4x4 trail on the site, which people seem to quite like. It seems to be quite popular. In addition to that, you can rent a mountain bike from reception and so you can do some of the biking trails or just do some of the trails on a bike around the site. Note, of course, that it can get a little bit sandy, in which case it might be a bit of tough going, but generally if you stick to the roads and well-trodden paths, then it should be pretty decent mountain biking. According to the website, the gate opens at 0800 hours and closes at 1800 hours and the same hours will apply for the reception. Note that whichever route you choose to get here, you are going to go over several kilometers of dirt road before you get to the park. The park itself, of course, has dirt roads only. You don't need a 4x4 to get here, but obviously you need a vehicle with decent clearance and that can handle relatively rutted roads. The roads are quite rutted getting here. In some areas, it's quite rough going, so just be prepared for that. Within the Witsan Park, though, we found the roads to be pretty good. You should be able to get here with most types of caravan or trailer. I don't think you require any special arrangements to get here with one of those. Bookings can be done via email or you can phone, but they do prefer that you do it via email. So this is why you should always be careful when you are taking down your tent. As is often the case in arid areas like this, you should be aware of scorpions, especially at night. So look out for those and preferably wear closed shoes at night. The camps are unfenced, so they're part of the nature reserve. So you will have wildlife coming in and out of the campsites from time to time. As always on campsites like this, it's important to note that there are vertebrate monkeys within the nature reserve. We've seen them, but we have not interacted with them at the campsite. So they haven't come through to the campsite, but I think you should still be wary of that. So these are pretty well appointed campsites. There is electricity, there's fresh water, there are ablutions. Basically, there's everything that you would need at a campsite. We're at campsite number eight of the 10 campsites that are here. 
and we've managed to find a campsite with a beautiful little alcove inside of this thorn tree where we put up our tent. So our tents got shade pretty much the whole day. For myself and my significant other, it's sufficient space for our tent as well as the car with the awning out. So it's really a decent amount of space in, re in that respect. But like I say, you allowed six people on the site and you could easily fit six people per site. One of the great things about Vitsat is that you can walk around on foot everywhere basically within the reserve. So you don't have to be in your car, you can walk around. There's a couple of cool trails to do, there is a botanical trail, there's a lot of birding to do as well and of course there's the famous Roaring Sands. Take note to experience the Roaring Sands, pretty specific conditions. So we have tried but we did not witness any roaring, in fact we didn't even witness a whisper. It was just quiet and windy when we got up there and it's quite a climb as well so be prepared to do that. You've got to try and get there early in the morning, it gets quite hot through the day and apparently early in the morning is when you hear the roaring sands. The campsites have a swimming pool which is fantastic to have in these crazy hot temperatures. It's really hot at the time we're here, we're here in December so it's basically hot. There's a nice breeze most of the time but the sun is beating down very little cloud in the sky but it's really beautiful weather and this is what we love about being out here in the Kalahari. So this is not a big five park and it is unfenced or the campsites rather unfenced. So it's quite nice because you have spring buck kind of going in and out of the campsites especially in the evening once the sun goes down and it cools down. There's quite a bit of spring buck that are around grazing in the area. If you're a birder this is a great place to be as well. Lots of birds a lot of LBJs as well, so if you're really a keen birder, then there's quite a bit of challenge here for you. But just in general, there's beautiful birding within the Vitsun site and also at the campsites themselves. It is pretty hot here, so make sure to bring the sunscreen and also to keep yourself well hydrated. The ablution block has a set of bathrooms. There's three showers in each of those. So considering that there are 10 sites and you can have as many as six people per campsite, that's actually not a lot and I think if you go in there a bit late at night for example it's difficult to get hot water so just take note of that they are adequate the bathrooms are very decent and all the rest of it I have no complaints about them but I do think that for the number of people that can camp here that's maybe not sufficient in terms of facility so in general the campsites are in pretty good condition all this stuff seems to work it's pretty good nicely maintained no complaints on the, in that respect we found that the staff were very friendly very helpful on the way in so it is quite a nice well a warm welcome coming into here basically anybody could camp here all the basic amenities are here there's electricity there's water there's a bry stand there is a dustbin there are ablution facilities so pretty much everything that you could want at a campsite you will find here including a shop with your basic necessities if you want to go and buy some stuff would I recommend Vitsun campsite? Yes, I would. It's a really nice campsite. I think it's really nicely set up. I think the campsites themselves are a decent size. They've got good shade, which is really important over here. And they've got all the basic amenities. I actually have no complaints and I think it's really a beautiful place. It's a nice place in itself to come and visit. And it's also a great stopover on the way to the Kahadi National Park, as I said earlier. If you found this informative, if you liked the episode, then hit the like button. Also subscribe if you haven't already. Please leave a comment below. It's great to get feedback from you guys. And until the next episode, go everywhere, see everything. Have a great time.